I stood in the center of Harry's opulent living room, my heart pounding as I faced the man I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with. His cold eyes bore into mine, a hint of cruel amusement dancing in their depths. "'Catherine, darling,' Harry drawled, his voice dripping with false sympathy. "'You didn't really think this was going to last, did you?' I clenched my fists, fighting to keep my voice steady. "'What are you talking about, Harry? We're engaged. We're supposed to be getting married in three months.' He laughed, the sound sharp and mocking. "'Oh, come now. You're thirty-two, Catherine, practically ancient. Did you honestly believe I'd settle for someone so... boring?' The words hit me like a physical blow. I stumbled back, bumping into an end table, a vase teetered precariously before I steadied it with trembling hands. "'Harry, please,' I whispered, hating the desperation in my voice. "'What's going on?' A new voice cut through the tension. "'Really, Catherine, have some dignity.' I turned to see Sophia, Harry's mother, gliding into the room. Her perfectly coiffed silver hair and impeccable designer outfit made me acutely aware of my own disheveled appearance. Mother, Harry said, his tone shifting to one of deference. I was just explaining to Catherine that our engagement is off. Sophia's lips curled into a satisfied smirk. It's for the best, dear. You were never truly good enough for my Harry. I felt my cheeks burn with humiliation. How can you say that? I've done everything to fit into this family, to be what you wanted. Harry snorted. And that's precisely the problem. You're so desperate to please, so eager to mold yourself into what you think we want. It's pathetic, really. But I love you, I protested weakly. Love? Harry scoffed. Please, what we had was convenient, but I found someone much more... suitable. The pieces clicked into place. You've been cheating on me? His smile was cold. Let's just say I've been exploring my options. Nina is young, vibrant, everything you're not. The name struck a chord. Nina, your new assistant? She's twenty-eight, Harry said, his eyes gleaming, and far more exciting than you could ever hope to be. Sophia clapped her hands together. Well, now that's settled. Catherine, I trust you'll see yourself out. We have a lot to discuss regarding damage control. I stood there, frozen, as the reality of the situation washed over me. Years of my life wasted on this man and his toxic family— the constant criticisms, the subtle put-downs, the way they'd slowly chipped away at my self-esteem, it all came crashing down around me. You're right, I said quietly, surprising myself with the calm in my voice. I should go. Harry's eyebrows shot up. That's it? No tears, no begging? I met his gaze steadily. No, Harry. I think I've wasted enough tears on you. As I turned to leave, Sophia's voice stopped me. Do try to be discreet about this, Catherine. We wouldn't want any unfortunate rumors circulating. I paused at the door, a newfound steel in my spine. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Sophia. I'm sure the truth will come out soon enough. With that, I walked out of Harry's house for the last time. As I stepped into the crisp evening air, my phone buzzed. A text from my mother, Emma. Honey, is everything okay? You sounded upset earlier. Do you need me to come over? I stared at the message, torn between the desire to collapse into my mother's arms and the need to stand on my own two feet. Before I could decide, another text came through. This one from an unknown number. Catherine, it's Nina. We need to talk. Harry's, Harry's not who you think he is. Please call me. I looked back at the house, my mind reeling. What had I gotten myself into? And more importantly, how was I going to get out? I stood in the driveway of my parents' house, surrounded by cardboard boxes and suitcases. The weight of my shattered engagement pressed down on me, making each breath a struggle. "'Catherine, honey, let me help you with that,' my mother Emma called out, rushing towards me with outstretched arms. I sighed, handing her a small box. "'Thanks, Mom. I've got the rest.' Emma's eyes darted between me and the pile of belongings— are you sure you don't want to talk about what happened? It's not like you to just up and leave Harry without— Mom, please, I cut her off, my voice sharper than intended. I can't, not right now. She pursed her lips but nodded, following me into the house. As we entered, my father's voice boomed from the living room. Is that my Kathy? Come in here, sweetheart. I plastered on a smile and walked in, finding my dad, Ben, settled in his favorite armchair. His eyes widened as he took in my disheveled appearance. "'Good Lord, what's happened?' he asked, struggling to his feet. Before I could answer, Emma chimed in. "'She won't say, Ben. Left Harry without so much as a word of explanation to us.' 
I felt a flash of irritation. I'm right here, you know, and I'll explain everything. Just give me a minute to breathe, okay? As if on cue, my phone buzzed. Nina's number flashed on the screen. I excused myself and stepped onto the back porch, my heart racing as I answered. Nina, what's going on? Her voice came through, trembling and low. Catherine, I'm so sorry. I never meant for any of this to happen. Harry, he, he's not who we thought he was. I leaned against the railing, my knuckles turning white. What do you mean? He's been playing us both, and not just us. There are others, Catherine. So many others. My stomach churned. Others? Nina, what are you talking about? Can we meet? There's so much I need to tell you, but not over the phone, please? I agreed, setting up a meeting at a local coffee shop. As I hung up, I turned to find my mother standing in the doorway, her face a mask of concern. Catherine, what's going on? Who was that? I took a deep breath. Mom, I need to go out for a bit. There's someone I have to meet. Emma's brow furrowed. But you just got here. And your father. I know. I'm sorry. But this is important. I promise I'll explain everything when I get back. Before she could protest further, I grabbed my keys and headed for the door. As I reached for the handle, my father's voice stopped me. Kathy, wait. I turned, bracing myself for another interrogation. Instead, Dad's eyes were soft with understanding. Whatever's happened, whatever you're going through, we're here for you, kiddo. Always. Tears pricked at my eyes as I nodded, unable to speak. I rushed out before the dam could break. The coffee shop was bustling when I arrived. I spotted Nina in a corner booth, her face pale and drawn. As I slid in across from her, she pushed a manila folder towards me. What's this? I asked, my hand hovering over it. Nina's eyes met mine, filled with a mix of fear and determination. Everything I've found out about Harry, the women he's manipulated, the lies he's told, it's all in there. With shaking hands, I opened the folder. Photos spilled out. Harry with different women, some I recognized, others I didn't. There were financial documents, text messages, emails. Oh my God, I whispered, the reality of Harry's deception hitting me full force. Nina reached across the table, grasping my hand. Catherine, I'm so sorry. I had no idea when I started working for him. I thought I was special that he really cared, but we were all just pawns in his game. I looked up at her, a newfound resolve settling over me. We need to stop him, Nina. We can't let him keep doing this to women. She nodded, a small smile forming. That's why I reached out. I thought, maybe together, we could do something. As we sat there plotting our next move, my phone buzzed again. A text from Harry. I made a mistake. Please come home. We need to talk. I showed it to Nina, whose face hardened. Don't fall for it, Catherine. That's how he reels you back in. I deleted the message, feeling a mix of pain and liberation. I won't, I assured her. It's time Harry learned he can't manipulate us anymore. As we left the coffee shop, a familiar car pulled up. Sophia stepped out, her eyes locking onto mine with predatory focus. Catherine, she called out her voice sickly sweet. We need to have a little chat about your indiscretion. I froze, caught between fight and flight. The battle was just beginning, and I knew it was about to get a whole lot messier. I stood my ground as Sophia approached, her designer heels clicking ominously on the pavement. Nina tensed beside me, her hand gripping my arm. My dear, Sophia purred, her smile not reaching her eyes. We really must discuss your little outburst. It's causing quite a stir. I lifted my chin, meeting her gaze. I have nothing to say to you, Sophia, or to Harry. Her eyes narrowed. Don't be foolish, Catherine. You're making a spectacle of yourself. Come, let's talk privately. Before I could respond, Nina stepped forward. She said, No, Mrs. Bellamy, please leave us alone. Sophia's mask slipped for a moment, revealing a flash of anger. And who might you be? I'm Nina, another woman your son manipulated. The older woman's face paled slightly before she regained her composure. I see Harry has been... indiscreet. All the more reason for us to handle this quietly, Catherine. I shook my head. No more secrets, Sophia. No more lies. As she opened her mouth to argue, my phone buzzed. A text from an unknown number. Catherine? It's Rachel. Nina gave me your number. Can we meet? There's something you need to know about Harry. I showed the message to Nina, whose eyes widened. Rachel was before me, she whispered. I thought she'd moved away. Sophia... Sensing she was losing control of the situation, reached for my arm. Catherine, be reasonable. I jerked away from her touch. We're done here, Sophia. Tell Harry to leave us alone. 
As we walked away, I could feel her glare burning into my back. Nina led me to her car, her hands shaking as she unlocked it. That was intense, she said, sliding into the driver's seat. Where to now? I typed a quick response to Rachel, setting up a meeting at a local diner. We're about to get some answers, I told Nina. The diner was nearly empty when we arrived. A petite blonde waved us over to a corner booth, her face etched with worry. Rachel? I asked as we sat down. She nodded, fidgeting with a napkin. Thanks for coming. I... I wasn't sure if I should reach out, but when Nina told me what happened... It's okay, I assured her. What did you want to tell us? Rachel took a deep breath. Harry, he's dangerous, more than you know. Nina leaned forward. What do you mean? When I was with him, things got intense. He became possessive, controlling. When I tried to leave, he threatened me, said he'd ruin my life, my career. I felt a chill run down my spine. Did he hurt you? Rachel's eyes filled with tears. Not physically, but emotionally. He destroyed me. I had to move, change my number. I thought I was free, but then I heard about you two. As Rachel shared more details, a picture emerged of a man far more sinister than I'd realized. Harry hadn't just been unfaithful. He'd been systematically targeting and manipulating women for years. There are others, Rachel said, her voice barely above a whisper. At least three more that I know of. Nina and I exchanged glances, the weight of this revelation settling over us. We need to do something, Nina said firmly. We can't let him keep hurting people. I nodded, a plan forming in my mind. We need to find these other women. Together, we might have a chance of stopping him. As we discussed our next steps, my phone buzzed again. A text from my mother. Catherine, where are you? Your father and I are worried sick. And Harry's here, saying there's been a misunderstanding. I felt the blood drain from my face. Harry was at my parents' house, no doubt spinning his web of lies. I have to go, I said, standing abruptly. Harry's with my parents. Rachel grabbed my hand. Be careful, Catherine. He'll say anything to get you back under his control. I squeezed her hand, grateful for the warning. I will. Thank you both. We'll be in touch soon. As Nina and I rushed out of the diner, I felt a mix of fear and determination. The stakes had just gotten higher, and I knew the real battle was only beginning. Harry had underestimated us, thinking we were weak, isolated. But he was about to learn that together, we were a force to be reckoned with. I stood outside the Bellamy mansion, my heart pounding in my chest. Nina and Rachel flanked me, their presence giving me strength. We'd spent the last week gathering more women who'd fallen victim to Harry's manipulations, and now, on the night of his birthday party, we were ready to expose him. Are you sure about this? Nina whispered, her eyes wide with apprehension. I nodded, my jaw set. It's now or never. He needs to be stopped. We walked up to the door, uninvited guests about to crash a party of the city's elite. I could hear the muffled sounds of laughter and clinking glasses from inside. My hand trembled as I reached for the doorbell, but I forced myself to press it. The door swung open, revealing a startled server. Before he could speak, I pushed past him, the others following close behind. We marched into the grand foyer, where dozens of well-dressed guests turned to stare at us in shock. And there, in the center of it all, stood Harry. His charming smile froze on his face as he saw us, recognition and fear flashing in his eyes. Catherine, he said, his voice a mixture of confusion and anger. What are you doing here? I took a deep breath, steeling myself. I'm here to tell the truth, Harry, about who you really are. A hush fell over the room. From the corner of my eye, I saw Sophia rushing towards us, her face a mask of fury. How dare you, she hissed. Security, remove these women at once. But before anyone could move, Rachel stepped forward. My name is Rachel, she announced, her voice shaking but clear, and Harry Bellamy emotionally abused and manipulated me for months. Nina spoke next. I'm Nina. Harry used his position of power over me at work to coerce me into a relationship. One by one, the women with us shared their stories. With each revelation, I watched Harry's facade crumble. Guests began to murmur, some edging away from him in disgust. This is preposterous, Sophia shrieked. Harry, tell them! Tell them it's all lies! But Harry stood frozen, his eyes darting between the women and the shocked faces of his guests. For once, he seemed at a loss for words. I locked eyes with him, feeling a surge of power. It's over, Harry. No more lies. No more manipulation. Suddenly, my mother's voice cut through the tension. Catherine? 
What on earth is going on? I turned to see my parents standing in the doorway, their faces a mix of confusion and concern. My heart sank as I realized Harry must have invited them, another manipulation tactic. Mom, Dad, I said, my voice cracking. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but Harry, he's not who you think he is. As I began to explain, Harry seemed to snap out of his daze. He strode towards me, his charm switching on like a light. Catherine, darling, there's been a terrible misunderstanding, he said smoothly. Why don't we discuss this privately? I felt a moment of weakness, the old pull of his charisma tugging at me, but then I felt Nina's hand on my arm, grounding me. No, Harry, I said firmly. No more private discussions. No more secrets. Sophia, seeing her son faltering, stepped in. Everyone, please. This is clearly a misguided attempt at attention. These women are obviously disturbed. That's enough, Sophia, a new voice rang out. I turned to see Jonathan, my childhood friend, pushing through the crowd. I think we've all heard enough to know who's really disturbed here. Harry's face contorted with rage. You, he snarled at Jonathan. You put them up to this, didn't you? Always pining after Catherine, waiting for your chance. Stop it! I shouted, my voice echoing through the room. This isn't about Jonathan or me or any one person. This is about you, Harry, and the trail of destruction you've left behind. The room fell silent, all eyes on us. I could feel the weight of the moment, knowing that whatever happened next would change everything. Harry's mask had slipped, revealing the anger and desperation beneath. Sophia looked ready to explode, while my parents watched in stunned silence. In that moment, I realized there was no going back. The truth was out, messy and painful as it was. Now, I had to decide how to move forward, not just for myself, but for all the women Harry had hurt. I took a deep breath, ready to take the next step in reclaiming my life and helping others do the same. The aftermath of Harry's birthday party unfolded like a slow-motion car crash. I stood in the center of the chaos, watching as the carefully constructed world of the Bellamy's crumbled around us. Sophia, her face contorted with rage, turned on Harry. How could you be so careless, she hissed. Do you have any idea what this will do to our reputation? Harry, for once, seemed at a loss. His charm had evaporated, leaving behind a shell of a man I barely recognized. Mother, I— Don't mother me, Sophia snapped. This is your mess. Fix it. As they bickered, I felt a gentle hand on my arm. I turned to see Jonathan, his eyes full of concern. Are you okay? he asked softly. Before I could answer my parents approached, my mother's face was a mix of confusion and hurt. Catherine, honey, why didn't you tell us? I swallowed hard. I, I was ashamed, Mom. I thought I could handle it on my own. My father's voice was gruff with emotion. You should never have to handle something like this alone, Kathy. As we talked, I noticed Nina and the other women huddled together, supporting each other. Their strength in the face of adversity filled me with a sense of pride and purpose. Suddenly, Harry's voice cut through the murmur of the crowd. This is all a misunderstanding, he announced, his charm switching back on like a light. These women are clearly confused, possibly even mentally unstable. I felt a surge of anger. How dare you? But before I could finish, Sophia stepped forward, her face a mask of sympathy. Ladies, I'm so sorry for any pain my son may have caused you. Rest assured, we'll make this right. Perhaps a generous settlement would help ease your suffering? The room fell silent. I could see the wheels turning in some of the women's minds, the temptation of financial security warring with their desire for justice. No, I said firmly, stepping forward. This isn't about money, it's about accountability. Sophia's eyes narrowed. Be careful, Catherine. You're playing a dangerous game. As if on cue, a man in an expensive suit approached us. Mr. and Mrs. Bellamy, I'm David Thornton, the family attorney. I suggest we take this conversation somewhere more private. I felt a moment of panic. This was spiraling out of control, becoming exactly the kind of legal nightmare we'd hoped to avoid. Jonathan squeezed my hand reassuringly. You don't have to do this alone, he whispered. I took a deep breath, looking around at the faces of the women who had trusted me, at my parents who looked both concerned and proud, and at Harry, who watched me with a mixture of fear and resentment. In that moment I realized that this wasn't just about exposing Harry anymore. It was about breaking free from the toxic patterns that had defined my life for so long. It was about standing up not just for myself, but for all the women who had been silenced and manipulated. 
No, I said, my voice stronger than I felt. We're not going anywhere. Whatever you have to say, you can say it here in front of everyone. Sophia's face turned an alarming shade of red. You ungrateful little. That's enough, mother, Harry interrupted, his voice oddly calm. He turned to me, his eyes unreadable. You've won, Catherine. What do you want from us? I felt the weight of everyone's gaze on me. This was it. The moment that would define everything that came after. I could take the easy way out, accept a settlement and disappear. Or I could stand my ground and fight for real change. My mind raced, considering the implications of each choice. The safety of settling versus the risk of pushing forward. The potential for closure versus the chance to prevent Harry from hurting anyone else. I looked at Nina, at the other women, at Jonathan, and finally at my parents. Their faces reflected a mix of emotions, fear, hope, determination. Taking a deep breath, I made my decision. Whatever came next, I knew it would change everything. But for the first time in years, I felt truly in control of my own destiny. What I want, I said, my voice steady, is for the truth to be heard. All of it. The weeks following Harry's birthday party were a whirlwind of emotions and confrontations. I thought I'd seen the last of Harry and Sophia, but I couldn't have been more wrong. It started with a series of late-night phone calls. Harry's voice, once so charming, now sounded desperate and broken. Catherine, please, he begged. I've changed. I'm getting help. Can't we talk about this? I steeled myself against the familiar pull of his manipulation. There's nothing to talk about, Harry. It's over. But he persisted, showing up at my workplace with flowers, sending heartfelt letters to my parents' house. To the outside world, he appeared a man genuinely seeking redemption. One evening, as I left work, I found him waiting by my car. Just hear me out, he pleaded, his eyes brimming with tears. I've been in therapy. I'm confronting my issues with my mother. I know I hurt you, but I want to make it right. For a moment I felt my resolve waver. The Harry before me seemed so different from the man who had cruelly dismissed me weeks ago. He's lying. Nina's voice cut through my thoughts. She approached us, her face set in determination. Don't fall for it, Catherine. This is exactly how he reeled me back in before. Harry's face darkened. This doesn't concern you, Nina. Catherine and I have a history. A history of manipulation and abuse, I interrupted, finding my voice again. Nina's right. This ends now, Harry. As we turned to leave, Sophia appeared as if materializing from the shadows. Catherine, darling, she cooed, her voice dripping with false sweetness. Surely we can sort this out like adults. Harry's trying so hard. I felt trapped, cornered by the two people who had caused me so much pain. But then I saw Jonathan striding towards us, his face a mask of concern and anger. Is everything okay here? he asked, positioning himself protectively beside me. Sophia's eyes narrowed. This is a family matter. I suggest you leave. Catherine is my family, Jonathan replied firmly, and from what I can see she wants nothing to do with either of you. Harry's facade cracked, revealing the anger beneath. You've always wanted her, haven't you? Waiting in the wings like a vulture. Enough! I shouted, my voice echoing in the parking lot. This isn't about Jonathan. This is about you, Harry. You and your toxic, manipulative behavior— and you, Sophia, enabling and encouraging it every step of the way. Sophia's face contorted with rage. How dare you speak to me that way? After everything we've done for you. Everything you've done? I laughed bitterly. You've done nothing but tear me down, make me doubt myself, and support your son's abusive behavior. As the confrontation escalated, I noticed a small crowd gathering. Among them, I recognized some of Harry's colleagues and friends, watching with shocked expressions. Harry— Realizing his carefully crafted image was crumbling, made one last desperate attempt. Catherine, please, he said, reaching for my hand. I love you. I've always loved you. For a split second, I saw the man I thought I had known, the one I had planned to marry. But then I looked into his eyes and saw the truth, the manipulation, the lies, the deep-seated need for control. No, Harry, I said, my voice steady. You don't love me. You never did. You love the idea of me, the version of me you could control and mold to fit your needs. But that person doesn't exist anymore. I turned to Sophia, years of pent-up frustration pouring out. And you, you're so obsessed with maintaining your perfect family image that you can't see the damage you're doing to your own son. Sophia recoiled as if slapped. You ungrateful little. 
That's enough, Jonathan interjected, placing a steadying hand on my shoulder. Catherine's made herself clear. It's time for you both to leave. As Harry and Sophia stood there, stunned into silence, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. But I also knew this wasn't over. The look in Harry's eyes told me he wouldn't give up easily. As we walked away, Jonathan squeezed my hand. Are you okay? I took a deep breath, realizing that for the first time in years I truly was. Yes, I said, but I have a feeling the real battle is just beginning. Little did I know how right I was or how much strength I would need for what was to come. The annual Fulbright family reunion was always a tense affair, but this year the air crackled with an almost unbearable electricity. I stood in my parents' backyard, surrounded by relatives I hadn't seen in years, all of them stealing glances and whispering behind their hands. "'Catherine, dear,' my Aunt Mildred cooed, approaching with a sympathetic smile. "'We were so sorry to hear about your situation with Harry. Such a shame.' I forced a polite smile. "'It's for the best, Aunt Mildred, really.' As she opened her mouth to respond, a hush fell over the gathering." I turned to see Harry and Sophia striding across the lawn, looking for all the world like they belonged there. My mother hurried over, her face a mask of confusion. Harry, Sophia, I don't remember inviting you. Sophia's smile was razor sharp. Oh, Emma, darling, surely there's been some misunderstanding. We're practically family, after all. I felt Jonathan tense beside me, his hand finding mine and squeezing reassuringly. Want me to ask them to leave? he murmured. Before I could answer, Harry approached. His charm turned up to full wattage. Catherine, he said, loud enough for everyone to hear. I know I've made mistakes, but I'm here to make things right. In front of your whole family, I want to apologize and ask for another chance. The crowd of relatives collectively held their breath, all eyes on me. I could feel the weight of their expectations, the pressure to forgive and forget for the sake of keeping the peace. Harry! I started, my voice steadier than I felt. This isn't the time or place. Oh, I think it's the perfect time and place, Sophia interjected, her voice sickly sweet. Family should be there to witness reconciliation, don't you think? My father stepped forward, his face thunderous. Now listen here. But Harry cut him off, dropping to one knee in a move so theatrical it would have been comical if it weren't so infuriating. Catherine Fulbright, I've been a fool. Please give me one more chance to prove my love. Marry me, right here, right now. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the crowd. I stood frozen, overwhelmed by the audacity of it all. She said no, Harry. Nina's voice rang out as she pushed through the crowd. How many times does she have to reject you before you get the message? Harry's facade cracked, revealing a flash of the anger beneath. This doesn't concern you, he snarled. It concerns all of us, Rachel chimed in, stepping up beside Nina all the women you've manipulated and hurt. Sophia's eyes darted between the women, realization dawning. You ungrateful little hussies, she hissed. After everything my son has done for you. Enough! My mother's voice cut through the chaos like a whip crack. She turned to me, her eyes blazing with a fire I'd never seen before. Catherine, honey, what do you want? This is your life, your decision. In that moment, with all eyes on me, I felt a clarity I'd never experienced before. I looked at Harry, still on one knee, his expression a mixture of desperation and calculation. I saw Sophia, her mask of civility slipping to reveal the manipulator beneath. And I saw my parents, my friends, and even my gossiping relatives, all waiting to see what I would do. What I want, I said, my voice growing stronger with each word, is for you to leave, Harry. You and Sophia both. You've manipulated and controlled me for years, made me doubt myself and my worth. But not anymore. I turned to address the gathered crowd. I know many of you think I should forgive and forget, take Harry back for the sake of peace. But there can be no peace built on lies and manipulation. I deserve better. We all do. Harry stood slowly, his charm evaporating to reveal cold fury. You'll regret this, Catherine. You're nothing without me. No, Harry, I replied, feeling a surge of power. I'm everything without you. And it's time for you to leave. As Harry and Sophia were escorted out, amidst protests and threats, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. But I also knew this wasn't over. The look in Harry's eyes told me he wouldn't give up easily, and Sophia's parting glare promised retribution. I turned to face my family and friends, ready for whatever came next. 
The real battle was just beginning, but for the first time, I felt truly prepared to fight. Six months after the family reunion showdown, I stood in front of the mirror, adjusting my blazer. The woman staring back at me was someone I barely recognized, confident, strong, and free from the shadows of her past. You ready for this? Jonathan asked, appearing in the doorway. I took a deep breath. As ready as I'll ever be. We were headed to the courthouse, where Harry was facing charges for financial fraud and harassment. The weeks following the reunion had been a whirlwind of revelations. Harry's carefully constructed facade had crumbled, revealing a web of lies and illegal activities that stretched back years. As we entered the courtroom, I saw Nina and the other women who had come forward. Their faces were a mixture of anxiety and determination. Harry sat at the defendant's table, a shell of his former self. Sophia was nowhere to be seen. Last I'd heard, she'd fled to Europe to escape the scandal. The trial was grueling. Harry's lawyer tried every trick in the book to discredit us, painting us as scorned women out for revenge. But as each of us took the stand, telling our stories, the truth became undeniable. When it was my turn to testify, I locked eyes with Harry. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the charm that had once captivated me, but this time I saw through it to the emptiness beneath. Catherine, he mouthed, a plea in his eyes. I turned away, focusing on the judge as I recounted years of manipulation and abuse. With each word, I felt the last of Harry's hold on me slipping away. As the verdict was read, guilty on all counts, a collective sigh of relief rippled through the courtroom. It was over. We had won. Outside, surrounded by reporters, I felt a hand slip into mine. I looked up to see my mother, tears in her eyes. I'm so proud of you, sweetheart, she said, pulling me into a hug. My father joined us, his gruff exterior softened by emotion. You did good, Kathy, real good. As the crowd dispersed, I found myself face to face with Nina and Rachel. We embraced, united by our shared journey. What now? Rachel asked, her voice tinged with both hope and uncertainty. I smiled, feeling a sense of purpose I'd never known before. Now we help other women. We make sure no one else has to go through what we did. In the weeks that followed, we started a support group for survivors of emotional abuse. Watching women find their strength and reclaim their lives filled me with a joy I'd never imagined possible. One evening, as Jonathan and I walked along the riverfront, he stopped suddenly, turning to face me. Catherine, he said, his voice serious, these past months have been incredible. Watching you transform, seeing your strength, it's made me fall in love with you all over again. My heart skipped a beat. Jonathan, I... He held up a hand, smiling. I'm not proposing, not yet. I just want you to know that whenever you're ready, whatever you want our future to look like, I'm here. No pressure, no expectations, just us, figuring it out together. Tears welled in my eyes as I pulled him close. I love you too, I whispered. As we stood there, the setting sun painting the sky in brilliant hues, I reflected on the journey that had brought me here. The pain... The struggles, the moments of doubt, they had all led to this. I was no longer the woman who let others define her worth. I was Catherine Fulbright, survivor, advocate, and architect of my own happiness. The future stretched out before me, full of possibilities. There would be challenges, of course. The scars of the past don't disappear overnight. But for the first time in my life, I felt truly equipped to face whatever came my way. As Jonathan and I walked hand in hand towards home, I smiled, thinking of all the women out there still trapped in situations like mine. My story wasn't just about personal triumph. It was a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of resilience and the strength found in solidarity. The sun dipped below the horizon, marking the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. Whatever came next, I was ready. Strong, loved, and finally, gloriously free.